old school nothing fancy knife reviews full steam ahead next up may surprise you Columbia River Knife and Tool what you never review those nothing fancy well I do tonight say hello to the excellent CRKT Igniter great assisted opening high value blade probably best serving in the EDC role the Igniter love this blade Yes, I can't lie, there's a lot of CRKT designs which fail to connect to my own personal sense of style slash utility slash design. I know, that's why you don't see them too much. It's my preferences, I admit it, just don't dig them. This one I do though, it's excellent. Been in the project for quite some time, well over a year. I know, I should have knocked a review out a long time ago. I'm getting to it, here it is. And I also wanted a different coloration because as cool as this black and green G10 model is, I wanted the all black version. More tactical or whatever. Here it comes, the Igniter T. All black. Good looking blades, both of them. Pick your poison as far as colorations go. Jumping into the talking points. Philosophy of use already said it. I would say primarily everyday carry blades. Utility blades. You carry on your person to... I don't know, cut food, cut open packages, rope, daily utility cutting tasks. I wouldn't say that they are tactical blades. Maybe a little bit on the small size for that, and they lack meaningful traction plans. Yes, you could put them in that role if you had no other choice. I've always said that. Collectibles, maybe. I think they're user knives, though, especially at their price points. Um, the weight is okay, not awesome. 3.8 ounces. The reason I say it's not awesome is because there's a lot of knives in the EDC roll that will blow it away in terms of weight. Okay, let's stay real. What is it? The 1.4 ounce SOG Flash 1. I keep using that knife. What's another one? How about SOG Twitch? What is that? 2.8, 2.4, something like that. You know, a lot lighter. Spyderco Delicas. We could go on and on. So if you're looking for a super lightweight blade, the Igniters may not be it. Okay, but that's a POU's as I see them, and I think the blade size is adequate for the roll. Maybe a little bit on the large size for me. Again, I know I keep showing this knife, but it shows what I'm talking about. This is a great EDC blade for just utility tasks. Remember, like I've said in my EDC carry videos, I carry two blades on my person. Usually a tactical blade, actually three or four to be honest. I definitely have a tactical blade, then I have a utility blade. This would be the utility blade. Okay, that's a POU's as I see them. The steel is 8CR14, not 13 MOV. Very analogous to, I'm going to say steel. How about still to AUS8, AUS8 steel, which is an excellent all around steel. Not very rust resistant, as we have found out. A lot of users have found that out. It will rust on you if you don't take care of it. The blade shape is kind of a spear point, I guess. I don't even know if that's what you classify it as. That's kind of what I think of it as and this kind of gets into some design preferences for me personally generally I don't like spear point blades I like ones with more belly you know uh, just because it's here on the table here's a Manix 2 Spyderco I just have that I don't know I could go on and on here's a mini AK-47 by Colt Steel that was on the table see the difference in belly I like belly for a EDC blade because you know I'm cutting I'm roll cutting like that a lot of work at the tip as well but uh, the igniters are sufficient, but not in every roll do I want a long and slender blade shape that's not full flat ground. These are hollow ground, by the way. Again, 8CR14 MOV. Good tips, adequate precision for precision work, if I can say it that way. And how does it arrive out of box? Huh, I will say dull. Wah, wah. Not cool. I'm just saying, it's not. It should come razor sharp out of box. This one is still that way. I don't think I did anything with this edge. You should not be able to do this to your blade. Uh-huh, don't try this at home, kids. This one, the black tee, I slapped on my sharpener and I worked it. And uh, it's razor sharp right now. Oh, yeah. So the good news is you can bring it to hair pop and sharp with a little bit of work. It's just a matter of that it wasn't finished properly at the factory. How about the speed? More good news for the igniter. This is a fun knife to play with. Fun knife. Just flies out of the handle. This is how it works. It is a liner lock, like so. 
and then it has a button with a push through cylinder that actuates the liner. See that? Okay, and then the spring, actually the torsion bar, I think, in the in this case. You can see the torsion bar there at the bottom. Takes over and flips the blade out. Very simple design and it works great. I would have a concern if dirt or something gets in that, would it prevent actuation? Because there's really no alternative way to bring the blade out. Don't know. Uh, also, for lefties, they may not dig it because it's situated the way it's situated. For righties, pretty much. So you're not going to have a ton of versatility on it. I will say, though, comes out very fast. How's the lockup? Most excellent. In both of these versions, I don't detect any movement at all in the lockup. It's excellent. If you have to, you can adjust it like I always say. The thumb stud itself with a push through cylinder is excellent. And this is a collaboration, I, if I understand it right, between Matt Lurch, Ken Steigerwalt. I think they did a great job on this blade. I really do. Fast blade though. Really fast. Is it any faster than a lot of assisted opening blades out there to include the SOGs? Eh, I don't know. Sure it's fun to play with though. Great fondling blade. Uh, strength. Well, it's a liner lock. It's not a triad lock. It's not anything unusual. And some guys may have issue with how thin the liner is. Like I've talked about before, I think that's 420 stainless steel. Very, very hard. Okay, and I think for most uses, especially in the EDC roll, it will lock the blade up nicely. Now, if you want a baton with it, you want to put it in some hard use, you might want to look elsewhere for a blade. Okay, um, but as it comes, I think it's pretty darn strong. G10 handle, okay, handles as in plural. Uh, medium traction, not super high traction. By way of reference, super high traction would be the AKs or the recons from Colt Steel. This is high traction G10 right here. This is medium traction, and it's milled, i.e. sculpted for aesthetics. I think it looks good. And it goes under the clip, and it will wear your pocket just a little bit. If you don't like it, you can sand it like the viewers here in TMP have recommended. And I've tried, and it works great. Can do it. Um, I think it provides excellent traction though. Kind of jumping along to ergonomics, square shoulders on the blades. I'm talking on the handle actually. So it's not super, I don't know, rounded for long term cutting. There's no jimping. That sucks. Top or bottom, yeah. And there's no thumb ramp either. Again, getting to its lack of tactical PLU if you were to ask me. Um, you know, in an EDC blade, I think the ergonomics are sufficient. If not, excellent. Pretty good. Clip design. All right, a little bit of a downside. Keeping it real. Um, you're forced to carry tip down. Okay, and there's something CRKT does. It kind of like babysit us in some ways with all the safety mechanisms and, you know, the way they insist they, their knives are carried. In some models, I don't dig that so much. This might be one of them. I don't really like carrying tip down. Uh, you're stuck with it. And if you notice, there's no lanyard hole in this either. Kind of a minor downside, maybe a big downside depending on your point of view. Um, the clip itself is adequate. I find, well, let me say I have found in carrying this knife, uh, no problems. It's strong, doesn't clip, uh, grab stuff, decent clip, uh, but you are seriously stuck with it right there. Can't swap it from side to side. Not a lot of versatility without, without I'm sorry, durability. Any an EDC blade, I think the choice of steel, the choice of liner lock, I think will be adequate. Again, probably not a hard use knife. If you want a hard use knife, there's so many other options. Go look at my playlist, ex uh, can't speak, accessed from my channel page upper right. You'll see what I'm talking about. Value. Smoking. Smoking value. If you look around, you'll score at least as of 2011 for around $32 for this version, around $38 for that version. I'm going to put them in my best knives under $40 playlist, and that's exciting in and of itself. By the way, you can take those handle scales off if you have to. Nicely done, CRKT. Polished clip in the black and green G10 version, by the way. Let me show you that one so you can take a look. That's a good looking green, I think. It's not really OD, it's just kind of a dark, uh, dark, maybe depending on your point of view, a light green against the black. I think it's good looking. Satin finish blade in this version. Okay, which one, model do you like best, nothing fancy? Uh, hard to say. I, I think they're both great. I have lots of black knives. If I were half, if I were to be pressed, I'd probably prefer the black tee. Cool factor. Um, decent. You know, I think they're user blades. You know, they're everyday carry utility knives. 
Um, I think the innovative uh, deployment method is interesting. Again, you gotta push it. Your thumb may get sore playing with this knife, speaking from experience. It's a fun knife to play with. Comes out, just rips in speed. That gives it cool factor in and of itself. That it's just an interesting knife to play with. Show your friends. For the price, the utility you're going to get out of the igniters from CRKT, epic win. Yes, I can live with the clip. I can live with just one orientation on the thumb stud. Good job, CRKT and Mr. Lurch and Steigerwald. That's the Nut and Fancy Review recommended.